Hi there, and welcome to the second part of the intro to computer vision slash Python. Uh, this will be a practical session. And in this session, we will uh, start by uh, installing the software that we are going to use and the packages that we will use today and also in the future. Uh, and uh, to just uh, as a start, an example, uh, on how to use uh, one of the libraries that we will install today. So first things first, let's start by installing Python 3. And to do so, we have two possibilities. So either you go to uh, python.org and uh, then you go to download. You specify the operating system that you have. I have Windows in my case, and then the, you take select the stable release, and then you go to the bottom, and then you download the version uh, that corresponds to your system. If you are window, using Windows 10, you are probably running 64-bit, uh, so go and download, click here and download it, and then follow the instruction on how to install it. it will be just clicking next, 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 next. Uh, another way to install it is uh, via the uh, store that you have on Windows 10. So if I open the store and in the search bar type in Python 3.8 and then you can install it from the store as well. This is the second possibility. I have already installed it in my system. So go ahead and install it also in yours. Once this is done, you can check if you have Python up and running in system by opening a PowerShell and just typing Python. And if everything is uh, installed properly, you should see the following message. So uh, saying that you have Python 3.8.5 installed in your system. So this is the first thing that we will install. After this, uh, what we are going to install now is the our packages that we will be using in computer vision uh, in during our journey. Uh, so first one is the virtual environment. So in your um, uh, pa -pa 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 PowerShell, uh, exit from Python, uh, no, not the correct one, exit, uh, and then type in pip install virtual environment. Um, okay. We need virtual environment uh, it's, uh, to manage in the future the different projects that we are going to work on. So uh, if we have uh, in our uh, system different projects that are running different version of Python and different version of also libraries, uh, it will be most yeah it will be cleaner that each project has its own virtual environment when we have the right version and the correct version for Python and the correct version of the library. <clears throat> if you don't have this uh, option, then you will end up installing and reinstalling each time you are working on a specific project or uh, the different library and the corresponding version to it. The way to use virtual environment is as follow. So go to your project folder and then create a virtual, uh, yeah, a virtual environment. Um, yeah, usually it's it's best to use the same project name. So you, when you activate it, you know on which project you are working uh, on. Uh, but yeah, keep in mind that you can give it whatever name you want. Eh? Uh, and then if you would like to work on it and activate it, you just have to uh, execute the following command in a PowerShell. This is for the virtual environment. Then for uh, the libraries that we are going to use, we will install the three following. We will not use all of them uh, at the same time. Maybe we are going to use two 
at the time uh, but yeah just to, to the install them for now and you will see their use when in the upcoming uh, future keep in mind that yeah uh, maybe good to know that OpenCV is uh, one of the most advanced and most used uh, computer vision libraries now so we can solve directly by doing you can install OpenCV Python below is uh, also computer vision library it uh, has some good functionalities but it's really lightweight compared to OpenCV uh, scikit image you can compare it to OpenCV uh, it's between the pillow uh, and OpenCV and it also has some advantages compared to uh, both uh, we will see it uh, in the upcoming videos uh, but for today we will mainly use OpenCV so let's go ahead and install them seems that I had both installed already in my system OpenCV and Pillow and only one missing, uh, missing which was Psychic Image mm. okay it's done it's good then we go to the last uh, slide of today of the last part of the video which is hands-on code and uh, how are we uh, to show you how are we going to use uh, the OpenCV library to read an image from disk and also a video uh, I am using Visual Studio another uh, editor if you want you don't have to use Visual Studio it's up to you so uh, I have already some data which is just a jpeg image and mp4 file if you have one uh, on your disk you can use those if not i will also put a link to download the one that i am using today so let's create file here okay. then what we will need to do is to import cv2 to say that we need to import the computer vision library uh, then to read the image we need to uh, specify the name or the path where we can find the image and its name and then call a function to read that image and then uh, call another function to show uh, the image so that's all. Uh, when we read the image we will put it somewhere so we create a variable name it image and then to show it just to show it And we need to specify also a name for the window that will open. Okay, that's it. Uh, another thing that we need to add, but if we were to run the code as it is now, the window will open and close quickly. So we will have to add to it uh, a waiting uh, request. Uh, but let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. See, so the window opened and closed quite fast. So we have to add the wait key for it. 
We put zero just to indicate to the system that he needs to wait for an input from the user. So when we press a key in on our keyboard, the window will close. And then there is the image. If I press the button, it will close. So this is uh, how to read uh, an image from your hard disk. If uh, yeah, we do the same thing, uh, on our, yeah, more or less the same thing on to read the video. So copy this video. Here it will be a bit different. So we need first to open the video using the load it using the function video capture to video. And because the video is a sequence of frame, we will need to have a loop that will read uh, or get from the opened uh, video each time a frame and display it. Uh, I will already add cap release to close the video, not forget the quiet. Is uh, read a frame. So read. This function returns two things. So uh, a flag, uh, uh, true or false, if there is a frame uh, being returned, press, and the frame we requested. Uh, what we can do to show the frame itself, we do if check if the less is true. If it is true, then we show the frame like this. Frame. If not, we do a break to exit from the loop. Uh, but remember that im show will close quite fast, so we have to also ask it to wait a couple of seconds before going to the next frame otherwise we will not see anything so here you can put any number we want you can put 10 for example and let's see the results ah, i have an error close by itself uh, that's it I will put a link to uh, also I will put also the video uh, and this script uh, also next to the data and uh, put a link to in the, in the description of the video so you can also have access to it if you have any question or doubt or remark leave uh, a comment in the video I will, I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible thanks again for watching the video and see you in the next one.